Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this uh, happy Wednesday morning. We are so thankful for you to be with us today. We have an amazing panel that we've brought together today to share with you ideas on lessons learned in this uh, time of change as we've moved to remote learning. My name is John Shoemaker. I'm from the Department of Educational Technology. And uh, before we get started with the panel, just sharing a couple of our normal housekeeping things. The first thing is, this is obviously live on YouTube and it is being recorded. So um, please keep in mind that whenever this uh, stream is over, it will be posted to our YouTube channel almost immediately. And you can get to our channel down below by just clicking on our name. Don't do it now, just later. Uh, but you'll just click our name down there and it will show you, we're almost up to about 60 videos now that we've done live streaming since uh, the remote learning time has started. But while you're looking down below, don't forget to please subscribe to our channel. We're, we're at 1.3 thousand people and we just wanna keep getting more and more each day. Uh, feel free also to click that bell um, right next to it so that you can get notified every time we go live too. Um, and then you'll know everything that's coming up for the next uh, few weeks because we got some amazing things coming soon. So don't forget about that. Also feel free to give each video a like if you want to as well. We also have our website, which is edtechtraining.palmbeachschools.org. So when this is over, we'll be posting this stream to the panel discussion page underneath of live stream resources. So please feel free to visit that page for the other panels that we've had. We've had some great discussions on our other panels. So um, we really hope that you can go and, and relive those memories as well. And as always, the questions that are gonna be asked today, we ask that you also answer in the chat box. So the chat box is, nope, over there. Um, so um, please feel free to type your answer in the text box to whatever the question is that comes up and join the conversation. And Kaylin will hopefully be pulling some of the questions uh, that come up in the chat throughout, uh, throughout the show as well. So, um, we love having the interaction in the chat. We also have our little minions in the chat as well. There are people from EdTech with the wrenches, so uh, they can answer questions as well. So um, please feel free to have fun in the chat over there and please uh, uh, share your answers to what what's happening as well. So we have a great panel today. So it is my pleasure to introduce Kaylin Markman from the Department of Teaching and Learning who is going to take over and uh, then introduce our panel. So go ahead, Kaylin. Good morning, or almost, yeah, it's still morning. It's 1130, we'll, we'll say it's still morning. I don't know, right? We're losing track of time here in days. Um, you know, I brought together this panel because they say that experience is without a doubt the best teacher, right? And the worst experiences teach the best lessons in life and in education. So to say that we've learned a lot throughout this quarantine teaching period would be an understatement. And I'd like to um, showcase some fantastic educators who have been doing amazing work in their classrooms and I'll allow them to go ahead and introduce themselves. Um, and while you introduce yourself, if you could say your name, what school you're from, and then also let's share a song that represents you as an educator and why. And I'd ask that the participants do the same if you'd like. So go ahead and introduce yourselves. Jennifer? Hi, I'm Jennifer. Um, I am a sixth and seventh grade science teacher at Loggers Run. And this is my fourth year teaching. And it's um, a song that I would say that um, defines my teaching style is Me by Taylor Swift because I just think it gives the message that each student has a voice in the classroom and they each bring their own individuality to group works and therefore making the classroom more successful. Thank you. I'm Jacqueline. I'm, uh, I teach physical science eighth grade at Woodlands Middle School, Go Mustangs. And the song I would say would be Under Pressure by Queen because, you know, let's be realistic, as teachers, we are usually feeling that pressure to do well and to be awesome. <laughs> Hi, I'm Heather McGill. Uh, I teach physical science at Palm Springs Middle School. This is my 14th year teaching. And I would say the song that defines me as a teacher is Katy Perry's Firework. 
Um, because especially teaching middle school, we have to be explosive in the classroom to be able to reach our students. Good morning, I'm Maria Perez. I'm from Carver Middle School, Go Eagles. I think a song that represents me as an educator is Have It All by Jason Mraz. Every time I hear the song, I think about how much I want my students to succeed in every aspect of their life. And so I guess I'll close that out by saying Wrecking Ball. Uh, and that would be by Bruce Springsteen, not Miley Cyrus, because he's from New Jersey. And there's a line or a lyric in his song that's come on and take your best shot. Let me see what you got. And I would say that that kind of sums me up as a human, uh, especially as an educator, um, having been a former middle school teacher. So um, let's get started. Um, the first question that I want to uh, ask you about has to do with relationships. So all of you know, because you work with me closely, I'm a huge advocate for planning. And I think planning is um, probably one of the most important parts of being a great educator. But I would say that sometimes what your students need most has nothing to do with what's on your lesson plan. So. I'd ask, what practices have you been putting into play to help maintain the strong relationships you already had um, and you would had developed? And what are you putting into play now to continue to maintain those things? Um, I have been doing um, the SEL daily bell ringer for attendance. And I have found that that has been a great way to understand what's going on with them. Obviously we can't talk to them every day and you know see that they're upset or sad. Um, so this has been a great way for me to know, you know, I had a couple students whose dog died and they were really upset. So I was able to send them an email and communicate with them about that. Um, you know, and I found out that one student was living with family, you know, in another state helping them during this time. So it's been a great way for me to bring in that SEL component, the social emotional learning component, um, and to keep that connection with them. Thank you for sharing, Jacqueline. Heather. Um, I'm also doing the Google Forms with the SEL component um, and following up with students by email. I think it's interesting. Some of them will even type on the forms. Do you even read these? Um, and I, I try to respond back to all 100 students as fast as I possibly can to let them know that I'm re that I am reading it and engaging with them. Um, but I'm also creating office hours in the afternoons where the students are able to come in, just talk to each other, talk to me, share things. And I think that that's really been a powerful part of continuing building the relationships with the students, especially with digital learning. Thanks, Heather. Maria. I'm very honest with my students. Um, they know that I read their bell ringers because every evening, um, I post like a debrief of what happened today, what what are some cool things that happened. And sometimes I even like to read out some of the funny answers that I get. Like yesterday I asked them, who are the heroes in your family? And I let them know that so many of them are putting down their families, their aunts, their mom and dad, and it's so heartwarming. So I think it's super important that we try to be as honest as, as we can possibly be with our students and own up to our own mistakes too. Yeah. Thank you. And um, I think also adding like additional comments when you're giving out assignments. So not just uploading the assignments on Google Classroom, but adding comments to them. So giving them like a brief like introduction of what the week is gonna hold for them. And then um, adding on to the Google Forms is just adding in like those funny videos just to give them like a little smile when they are checking in with you. Um, it just keeps them knowing that you're being personal with them. Absolutely. Thank you all for sharing. You, you guys hit the nail on the head. It's, it's really in those small moments, right, that we build relationships. Um, and I think that that's, that's important. So thank you um, for sharing your thoughts. I did notice in um, some of the comments that were coming in that other people are also um, including, like I noticed, um, Melanie Labetto, who is from Omni, she said that she's doing SEL check-ins uh, during her sessions um, multiple times a week. So that's fantastic. And I also noticed that somebody uh, mentioned, and I think that might be Elaine, but I can't tell, um, 
that her song was happy from Pharrell Williams um, and just rolling with whatever comes her way. So I, I thank you for sharing. And I encourage all you participants out there to, to engage with us because um, everybody knows that uh, a stand and deliver is not how we operate, right? At least not a good teacher. So um, my second question centers around engagement. Um, we know that there is an undeniable tie between engagement and student success. Um, and for anything to stick, it's got to matter. Um, so what tools and resources have you been using to spark and maintain engagement uh, in your digital classrooms? Ooh. Oh, Maria, go. <laughs> I love this question. Yesterday we were doing a live stream and we're doing physical science review right now for the FSA, which we're not doing, but we still tell our kids, it's super important that you know this. So what my team and I like to do, Ms. Tracy and Ms. Gail, we love to do as many demonstrations as we can during a live stream. So yesterday we're talking about Newton's laws of motion. And of course I'm in my bedroom and all of a sudden I think I have to show you how to do the magic cloth trick. And I'm like, we're all like yelling at the students, telling them, don't do this with your parents, fine china. Don't do this with glass cups. Do this with like a water bottle or something. And you were explaining to them, okay, so you gotta pull it out from under really quickly because objects at rest wanna stay at rest. And that's the law of inertia. So we like to give them like little experiments that they can do at home and they love doing it. Some of them have even emailed us like their pictures and videos of um, of their own experiments and whether or not they succeeded or not. I love that. I, I I'm like grinning from ear to ear. I love that. And I love the fact that you reference students of motion. Yes, I'm an Uber nerd, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> I admit it. I wear my badge proudly. Um, Heather, you were, you had your hand raised. What were you going to say? I think that part of uh, the engagement is making sure that you're going live with the students on a daily basis. Um, I don't miss a beat. I get on every single day with the kids. I interact just like I would in the classroom. I had been very creative as far as turning any kind of group activities with card sorts into activities that they can still participate in together and have conversations online. And then making sure that I'm giving them as many engagement opportunities as possible. We participate in live virtual field trips and other digital field trips, um, do Monopoly games, anything I can to keep them engaged with each other and with me. Thanks, Heather. Yeah, so adding on to um, Heather there. So when you are giving them kids like options and stuff, when you're giving them assignments, I think um, giving them choice boards and having them pick what they want to complete so they're not being repetitive and doing the same assignments each day because um, we wouldn't do that in our own classroom. So just kind of keeping everything changing each day and not being repetitive. Agreed. I agree with that totally. We've been trying to add Flipgrid, um, which was awesome because we got to see the kids, you know, even though we can't interact that way, but we could see them and hear that from them um, about their experiences with um, the national parks because we um, brought that into play um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, we've evolved from Kahoot to GimKit, which has been amazing. Kahoot is awesome. I got to give Kahoot props because the kids still love it after all these years. But Gim Kid has just taken that engagement to a whole nother level. And it's reaching kids that um, doing Kahoot necessarily didn't reach. I, I thank you guys. And I, I think, and I'm going to be honest because, and this is them, they're downplaying themselves right now. Um, but they're downplaying all the amazing things that they're doing. I can, I can personally say, because I've sat in on classes. So, Ms. Perez mentioned her colleagues, Ms. Gale and Ms. Tracy at Carver, and they are doing the most amazing live classes with over a hundred kids in them at once, which is very possible in a meet. All the kids are engaged, they're participating. I know Jennifer is using Pear Deck to keep them in, engaged and doing tons of choice boards, which has been amazing. Um, Jacqueline talked briefly about her field trips, but they did this, amazing thing for um national park week and brought the kids to different places and they engage they did quit like buzzfeed kind of quizzes on what national park you would be and they had to respond and 
um, and tell kids where and tell people where they would want to go and why they should visit there. And of course, Heather's been doing things like playing Monopoly in the afternoon with the kids or just creating open spaces. So they're downplaying themselves, but whatever. Um, so I, I know you guys are stepping above and beyond every single day. So I want to ask you this. What's one thing that you're doing? And I ask this of the participants too. What's something you're doing for you right now to disconnect from the tech? Jennifer? Um, I'm definitely trying to keep up with my workouts and just following Orange Theory on Instagram and taking that hour to myself um, as if I would in um, when we were in person in classroom. That's good. Important. I am exercising on a regular basis, which is great. And I am playing with my plants, <laughs> my host plants for butterflies outside, and definitely stepping up my cooking game as well. I'm also uh, with my plants every single afternoon. Um, I ended up right before the lockdown, I went out and got all new plants for my patio. So I've been engaging with my tomatoes and my cucumbers who trying to overtake my whole patio. So that is one of the things I've been doing. Um, I've never owned a patio umbrella and the weather was so nice that first month of um, that first few weeks of March that I literally ordered a patio umbrella, an umbrella base. I got a rocking chair. I set up a huge space outside just for me to read books in and talk to my plants and just spending time outside where it's quiet and nice and literally far away from technology. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Um, you know, I, I'm a big uh, yoga practitioner and I haven't been practicing, uh, but I have been getting on my reformer. I have a Pilates reformer. So I've been doing that and I wasn't doing that before. Uh, so I definitely was um, taking it for granted that I had it. So I'm, I'm engaging in exercise every day. It's keeping my energy levels up because I know we're sitting in front of computers a lot. Um, and I think that that's important. So if, if you're not exercising, get out there. Now, I noticed some comments coming in and I want to point them out. Um, Elizabeth asked a question, what was the field trip information? Um, because I guess she's been um, making videos in her community. So Elizabeth, if you're doing some stuff, we would love to hear from you. Um, Cheryl commented on um, her own daughter participating in the field trips. We're, um, Heather is um, spearheading this um, with our department, with secondary science, and we're doing some uh, field trips with the environmental resource management um, team for Palm Beach County, which is fantastic. Um, so if you're interested in that and you want information, please contact our department. Um, Jennifer Davis, who's the program planner for secondary science, can definitely send you those links. Um, we've been promoting those. So um, if you're if you're not a science teacher and you're watching this right now, you're probably not receiving that information, but we could certainly get that out there through our other program planners. Um, so I'm happy to get that out. Um, and I also noticed that uh, Melanie mentioned um, that she's doing a lot of things with Flipgrid as well. So that's been really, uh, really, really um, quite engaging. If you guys have not tried Flipgrid, get to it. Um, so moving on, our third question that I wanted to ask today. Um, Henry Ford, right? And you guys know I love quotes. I'm like, a, a, it's terrible. But um, he said that failure is the opportunity to begin again more intelligently. And I think we'd all be lying if we had, if we said we didn't have some failures in this, in this time period, right? Uh, it probably brought you back to your first days as a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm wondering from you is what are, what's something that you did or found out that didn't work and what did you learn from the opportunity? So, <laughs> go ahead, Heather. So we would think that these students are really engaged and want to get in front of the camera. We see them all the time doing TikTok videos and engaging with their peers, you know, at school. And as much as we're talking about Flipgrid, and I love Flipgrid, it has been a total fail. Um, my students do not want to get on and do a single video. 
So for me to encourage them, because it's a way for us to um, engage and them to kind of communicate with each other, especially those that aren't always getting on for the lives, I've offered it as extra credit and I'm seeing a complete influx now that I've offered it for extra credit. So just giving them that extra motivation to try to step out of the little box and try something new. And, you know, and I would say for our audience, just so you know, if the fear is coming out of a place for using Flipgrid, like I don't want to put my face to everybody to see it. There is that option to have all the videos moderated, meaning that the submissions are only seen by the teacher at first. And then if they're stellar, you could turn around and say, you know, of my hundred students that submitted videos, five of them were amazing. And I'm going to reach out to them privately and say, hey, do you mind if I share these with the class as, as exemplars? And that might be a way to get more kids to participate at first, um, because it's, it is, it is scary. Um, it definitely is putting your, putting yourself out there, but they probably don't realize how good they are. So, th but thanks for sharing that, Heather. I really appreciate it. Um, Jennifer, I noticed you had your hand up. Yeah. So one thing that I think was a, a struggle for me at the beginning was the Google meets during, um, direct instruction or just reviewing content. Um, I think I may have started it too early and then you know, and 10, 15 minutes because it's just a quick review. And then those students who logged in late missed it. So a way that I saw improving this was just starting with more of like we talked about at the beginning that those SEL um, contents and just engaging like in games as I wait for more students um, to log on. So they may be waiting for others um, to log on to the Google Me as well. So I think improving on that has helped me. Thank you. Yeah, just today, sorry. <laughs> go ahead Maria go okay. ahead <laughs> just today um I've been trying to make my life a little bit easier so I I give my bell ringers at the start of the morning so that I tell my students as long as you do this before the end of the school day you you are here you're present I will mark it as you have done the assignment and I I knew that Google Classroom had a schedule option and I don't know what reason, but I was setting this at 11 p.m. last night and I set the schedule to release the bell ringer at 8 p.m. today. So this morning I'm getting a bunch of notifications like, Miss Perez, where's the bell ringer? You always have it up right now. Where's the bell ringer? And I'm like, it's supposed to be there. But I checked and you know what? I set the wrong time. Lesson learned, right? But you know what's so funny? That they're like wanting to do the bell ringer. So that's pretty awesome. Like, <laughs> I think. <laughs> How about you, Jacqueline? Well, I'm just gonna piggyback on what they are saying. Definitely with Google Meets, um, you know, we started the first day, virtual learning, gun ho. You know, I took my copious notes while watching your virtual, um, you know, um, training on it and, you know, was ready to go and it ended up being, you know, quite interesting to say the least and definitely learned, um, you know, about setting those clear expectations, mutes might have coming, coming in, um, you know, not allowing entry if they don't have a Palm Beach school's um, address, you know, when they try to come in. So a lot of lessons learned there as well um, as with Google Classroom and, you know, scheduling those assignments to go out because that's one less thing that we have to worry about. And also making a copy for students with Google Docs and things like that. So they don't have to ask permission um, to use that doc. Thanks for sharing, Jacqueline. Yeah, it's with any activity, right? You try it, it doesn't work, try it again, right? And it it right um, I, I wanna point out Bonnie Sonnenson, uh, Son Son. I, I might be, um, mispronouncing your last name, but I'm sorry, but I love this. Um, she mentioned, I have a do now while the kids are waiting for everyone to log in. Uh, sometimes a riddle, something like what doesn't belong, different fun activities. Um, and while yes, thank you, you teach elementary, that would even, that would work for any grade level. Kids love logic puzzles or riddles, or maybe it's a question of the day or something like that that's not content related, but that's a great idea in that waiting period if you wanted to give them something to do. So thanks for sharing that, uh, Bonnie, much appreciated. I really do like that. Um, so this has obviously been a difficult time. Uh, we know that, um, but I have to consider the old adage, you know, out of struggle comes strength. 
Um, so there has to, there, what positives have come out at this time? What skills maybe have your students developed? Um, I'm imagining some good things have actually come out of this struggle. Heather? Um, I've, I've noticed that the students are excelling more on being helpful towards each other and autonomy. Um, I've had students where even if I create a screencastify, there may be a different platform view that they see that I don't see, especially being on the teacher side. So I've had students jump up and say, something's you know not working correctly. Um, we have a little extra step on our side. And so they will recreate videos to share with their classmates as well, just to even help me out. Or they'll throw in a link when we're doing a Google chat um, in the in the Google Meet, in the chat menu, um, just to, to help each other out and, and you know help one another. So I, I think that that is stellar. And then we have the students that we don't always see, but they're still turning in, in their assignments and they're learning how to be autonomous, which I think this is this whole digital learning is a blessing in disguise because it's going to help them when they get to college, especially with online platform classes. Thanks for sharing that, Heather. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, to jump on what Heather was saying, I've also noticed um, somewhat autonomy. Um, I have a lot of um, ESE students and it's not really autonomy, but it's it's more like it's perseverance. I will get comments that are like, Ms. Perez, I can't figure it out. I don't know where this is. I don't know how to do it. And, and that was all the comments I got during the first week. But now it's like, um, Ms. Perez, I can't figure it out. And then literally a minute later, oh, never mind, I got it. And then I'll notice that um, somebody in the live stream will say the same thing that they couldn't figure it out. And then another student will jump in and they're like, oh, I did it yesterday. And they're so helpful, just like Heather said. They're, they're so nice to each other now. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Jacqueline, I saw your hand going up. Thank you, Maria. I appreciate it. Um, I'm really proud of the kids that are reaching out for help, um, whether it's by email or during office hours. We've had kids, you know, presenting their screens to show us what they're doing to help them because, you know, they can't log into something. So, you know, them re really reaching out for help is, I think, a really mature aspect of the situation, especially for younger kids. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, Jennifer. And adding on to that, I feel like sometimes students in the classroom um, won't ask for help when they need it, but I do think they are reaching out more um, during that time. And then also, I think that they're learning more like email etiquette and how to send and open up their emails and communicate that way, which um, like adding on to the college, which is definitely needed for them in the future. Thank you for sharing that, Jennifer. That's a great point. Um, they're learning how to email um, and what's appropriate and how an email looks very different than a comment on social media. And I think that's awesome. Um, I noticed a couple teachers, um, Melanie Libetto, she mentioned that um, she's learned so many creative ways to teach virtually. Uh, and she also gave a nice shout out to uh, the, the team in ed tech and teaching and learning that they've been given so many resources. Um, and uh, I see from the doc squad uh, mentioned that she, they really liked Heather's idea. Student created products are great. Um, peer to peer support assist them. Um, and also uh, I love seeing, I saw something from, um, oh, Suhail said they feel more confident with their learning um, because I think that they're, they're taking the reins themselves a bit um, and there's, they're figuring things out. And I think that's great. So we're teaching them to be resilient, right? and resourceful. Um, and I, I think that there's some great skills that are coming out of this, believe it or not. So there are, there's a, there's a positive lining. Um, it's easier for them to ask for help if they don't have face to face. Yeah. It's sometimes it is right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I find that as a professional developer, people may not ask me in a session, but the second it's over, I got a line of people waiting and they want to ask one-on-one -on -one questions. <laughs> so I think that's great. Um, Speaking of lines, um, when this whole thing's over, what restaurant will you be looking forward to eating at? And I would like to hear from the participants too, because we want to get a list of places we need to go. So what restaurant are you looking forward to going to? And what do you want to eat there? Or why do you want to go there? Jennifer? Um, I'm excited to go to Zim Burger just to get um, a good burger and milkshake. <laughs> Classics are good, right? Yes. 
Um, I'm excited to go to back to season 52. It's a place that my husband and I go to for special occasions. And it was the last restaurant we um, went to for his birthday before this all started. And I love their um, grilled trout. So that's what I would eat. <laughs> yes. Yum. Heather? I can't, I can't wait to go to Poppy Chulo's in Jupiter. I have been craving their Brussels sprouts tacos for weeks now. I know that sounds weird, but until you try one, oh my goodness, they are the best. I like the idea. That sounds really good. I think we should make Brussels sprout tacos. <laughs> Figure that out this week at some point. How about you, Maria? Um, there's this uh, one little out outdoor type of restaurant called Dune Deck Cafe, and it's literally right by the water. I've only been there once, and I I was thinking, oh my gosh, I want to go during spring break. I want to enjoy the ocean and like have a Dune burger or something. And since then, I'm just like, I can't wait. I've, I've been there, Marie, it's fantastic because you really forget for five seconds that you're not on vacation. You're like, wait, I live here? Like I live like five minutes from here? It's pretty, that's a pretty nice view. Um, I am looking forward to going to Elizabetta's on the Ave in Delray because they have a burrata and prosciutto bruschetta. That's ridiculous. So that I'm looking forward to. <laughs> Um, I'll have to do a lot of Pilates. Um, so having said, having so we can get off the food topic, but let me see if anybody's said any. Poppy Chulos people uh, has takeout. Heather, they got takeout. You can go there. I'm not and, driving all the way up to Jupiter. Okay, whatever. Pete, Pete, New York style restaurant in Lake Worth. Okay. Um, Okay, and then we're talking about curriculum. Now we're back to, we're, um, we're off the food topic. Okay, Benny's on the beach. Ooh, Benny's on the beach. Good music and vibes. Maria, you would like that place, no? I've been there, okay? I used to love it, and then they got a celebrity chef, and they stopped putting the mango salsa on their fish tacos, so I'm like, you know what? You're dead to me. You're done. You're dead to me. You're dead to me. <laughs> Benny's, are you listening? <laughs> um, so having said all, you guys have been awesome. I, I want to know, my last question really to you is, what would you say your biggest lesson learned has been throughout this quarantine experience? Um, what's the biggest lesson you've learned? Jennifer. Um, I think time management for myself and just knowing when to walk away um, from the computer because it really could go all day long and just setting boundaries for myself. Mm -hmm. Agreed when you're a workaholic, right, Heather? You can go now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say, say that my biggest lesson learned, um, I made a mistake at the very beginning. Um, I had one SEL check-in a week, uh, mm -hmm. and I realized that the students really needed that interaction on a daily basis with the SEL. Not everyone was coming to the lives. I thought more students would come to the lives. So giving them that SEL every single day and being able to ask questions and follow up and even share um, on my bell ringers with them, I actually share my answers to the same questions. So they have a little bit more of a relationship and get to know me. So biggest thing was making sure that I'm checking on them emotionally. That's a huge walk away. Thank you for sharing that, Heather. Um, I noticed this in the comments, but um. One of the comments was talking about what do you do if your students aren't really strong readers and like science is a it's a very um it's a subject that surprisingly has a very large amount of reading so i have maybe 17 students out of my 90 who can read on grade level at eighth grade and it's hectic and it's so hard sometimes trying to get them to do what i need them to do but i have found out that try, try, and try again has become my mantra, and it has become a mantra that I say to the kids too. And just really trying to present ideas in, in new ways, not just presenting a lesson and asking them, okay, now here's some content questions. It's trying to bring it home to them, especially like however you can through demonstrations or having them interact with you on Pear Deck, just Make sure that whatever you do, you don't you don't give up because you don't want your kids to give up. 
I love that you said that, Maria. Um, you actually um, really, you kind of were talking a lot. Uh, Melanie Libetto actually mentioned something that you were kind of talking about, finding what works for you, right? Um, and keep trying and trying and trying again and having an open mind because um, just in that whole adage of, you know, kids don't do as you say, they do as you do, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if we want kindness in a classroom, we have to model it. If we want compassion in the classroom, we have to model it. If we want whatever we want to see, we have to do. So if you model that, that um, expectation of yourself that you – are not going to quit and you're going to figure it out, the kids will fall in line with that too, right? Um, I, I noticed um, Alicia, and I'm not sure um, what happened to Heather, but maybe she'll pop back in. Um, before I turn to you, Jacqueline, I want to point out something Alicia said. Um, she said, set up classrooms for after school so they can connect and be goofy instead of sitting and learning. And I think that that's great. Um, I know Heather, she's not in the room at the moment, but she men, she does that and she sets up a time period. She's grading and things like that. But just setting up an open meet time for the kids to play a game against each other, for kids to just chat with each other. And it's just a safe, oh, I love that, Pete, making a safe, supportive, and inclusive space for our LGBTQ students um, and using their firm names or pronouns. And I think that that's amazing. I think that's huge. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so Jacqueline, what's your big takeaway? Well, um, you know, I kept questioning myself and, you know, am I doing enough? Am I doing things right? You know, I've been doing this for a very long time and, you know, finding ourselves kind of back to square one, you know, was a struggle. Um, and I tried to, you know, hone that, like think about, well, if I'm feeling this way, then how are the kids feeling? Um, and so making sure that we are checking in with the kids and making sure they have a way to share with us if they're struggling or need help um, is something that I think, you know, is a big, you know, learning experience. I, I thank you guys so much for joining me. And um, I have to say that to all of you that are watching or listening, um, these are just four teachers. Um, that are colleagues, which I'm fortunate to also call friends um, that I support. And, and I know that they're amazing individuals and they're, they're not the only amazing individuals out there. So um, I would hope to hear from more of you. Um, these four teachers have been contributing uh, a wealth of knowledge over the last six weeks. And if you haven't had the opportunity uh, to see any of the collaborations, I've been putting together a series of videos for six weeks now, um, and they're on uh, my channel, and please feel free to visit them. But teachers every week submit a selfie video to me of something that they learned. Sometimes it's a, um, a tip. Sometimes it's just something quick, it's 30 seconds. Sometimes it's a, oops, don't do this. Um, Sometimes it's just a strategy that they learned or something that they're looking uh, to try uh, to find, uh, or they're looking at a strategy they wanna try, a strategy that they wanna find out more about. But if you're interested um, in contributing, I highly uh, would, I would love for you to send me uh, your, your information or any ideas that you have. Um, if you're not comfortable doing it in a video and you just want to send it in a text form, you can do that too. But um, I think that they've actually gotten quite good in the beginning. They were like, you want me to video myself? And now it's funny. I, I'm like, oh, you put makeup on today. Oh, we're in a good, we're in good lighting. So now I think we're loving the camera a bit more um, than we were before. Um, and so if you're interested in seeing another panel of colleagues, I have some other colleagues that would love to do this next week. Um, contact me, contact John. Um, if you have something to contribute, reach out via email. Um, I'm going to turn it um, over if there's any questions that people want to ask. Um, John, I, I'm not sure if what you, yep. you're seeing. Yeah, so um, if there are any last minute questions, please feel free to um, to throw them out in the chat box um, and we will uh, we will get back to those questions in a second. Uh, as we're waiting, first of all, thank you all ladies. Uh, you had some great conversation going on in the chat as well of, of some of the ideas that you guys have shared, which is awesome. 
Uh, so I definitely appreciate your knowledge base and, um, you know, we're all working together and we can only learn from one another. So uh, that's what I love about this whole thing is learning new things with each other and, and figuring out what's working for people and then trying it and seeing if it works for you. And if it doesn't work for you, then that's okay. Uh, just try something new tomorrow, right? Um, so while there's we're waiting two, for- John, there's ahead. two questions. Sorry, I see one from Tracy Boisau. Boisau? Yep. Uh, do we have videos of teachers implementing best practices for distance learning? And that's a great question, Tracy. Um, I don't know that there's necessarily live a lot of live video of that, although I have to say I have screenshotted or shared, for example, with Carver and the work that they're doing in their live classes. I've, I've screenshotted that and sent that out. Just be careful to not showcase students' names or, or images, you know, their, their, their face and their, their name. So we block that out. Um, but if you want to see some video footage of teachers actually talking about stuff that they're really doing or things that they've had happen, I would say check out my my channel because there's six weeks of video there that showcase all different things people are doing from live meetings to flip grid to field trips to docs to anything that they're doing is up there. Um, so I would definitely check that out. Um, we also have um, we've also done two other panel discussions as well. Um, with one was with uh, some librarians and one was with other teachers as well. Uh, those are on our YouTube channel too, where you can get their ideas. Um, again, there's not really, uh, you know, we don't have anything at the district level where we're sharing best practices of distance learning. You all have been getting some emails uh, from, from communication, sharing some ideas too. Um, but even just YouTube itself is one of the best platforms in the world. Between YouTube and Twitter, you can learn anything you want. Um, so definitely check both of those places to see what, what other teachers are doing as well. I just want to um, give a quick shout out yep. to Michelle Jeffrey. I noticed I miss you too, Michelle, um, I, for seeing you guys every week and, um, you're welcome for providing the form. And I agree. I agree with what you're saying. I think providing a forum like this or providing a place for teachers to share their ideas is crucial because you're not hearing it from a, a book. This isn't the. You know, I laugh and you guys always know I mentioned this. It's, this is not like the Harry Wong of classroom management. Like when you walk in the Congress middle school, me, day one, I got my first days of school book. I'm like, oh, this is not what Harry was talking about. Because <laughs> it's not the ideal situation. So what I love is hearing from real people, right, who are doing the work. And I think that that's huge. So um, I agree you, Michelle, having that forum to do that is Matt is is a massive help to teachers across the county. Agreed. Um, there was a question quickly about YouTube. Um, yes, all of you do have your own YouTube channel for the district. It's under your district account. Um, so I know that some people are struggling, especially uh, sharing videos in Google Drive and get it, like people get stuck with a spinning wheel, just a quick tech tip. Um, you can upload videos to your own YouTube channel as unlisted and share that link. Uh, it's really easy. You just hit it in the top right corner, upload the video, unlist it, share the link. And YouTube plays on almost every device in the planet. So um, it, it is a helpful thing. So we don't have any tutorials on YouTube, but there are thousands of tutorials out there on how to use YouTube. So um, keep throwing oh, yeah. in questions. It really is easy. Yeah. Yeah, We're it is. The questions. So if you have more questions, we're going to do a little bit of cleanup here at the end, and then I'll give you ladies all the last word. Um, I just want to share on Friday what's coming up. Uh, first off, sorry, my nose is fading out. Uh, my light went out up there. Uh, so on Friday at 8 a.m., we're going to have some strategies from our multicultural department for ELL students and teachers. So um, if you have students who are ELL, please join our stream on Monday at 8 a.m. for some of the strategies and tools that they have to support you. Also Friday at 1130, our smart team is back to share additional ways to gamify your classroom. And then on Monday, we've got three streams going next Monday. The first at 8 a.m. is on Microsoft Sway, which is kind of like a, a website design tool. It's really cool. Um, our friend Tanya Averth is coming back again for her, I think, fourth 
time. Uh, she's going to share some more remote learning ideas with Adobe Spark. And then John Long, Julia Mate, and Sue Bailey are going to talk about code.org and how you can use code.org even during remote learning. So lots of great ideas coming in the next week. And then the following week, the week of the 18th, we're going to start some exciting field trips and career opportunities where we actually want you as teachers to share the live stream links with your students to join. So we have people who were the former vice president of the Walt Disney World. We have someone who works at Google who's going to talk about a career at Google. And again, these are not going to be designed for teachers. They are designed for your students to, to interact with, with these uh, cool people. We also have lots of organizations locally who are going to join us, like the Science Center, the Historical Society, for virtual field trips that we're going to be doing too. So be on the lookout for that. We're going to get information out starting next week, but uh, I think that's going to be awesome. And then, as always, if you need any help, please feel free to have uh, fill out our help form, uh, making sure it's case sensitive at the end, but fill out that help form and someone will get back to you quickly. It's a lot faster than getting us by email, trust me, uh, because there's a group of people that are actually monitoring that form. So we appreciate uh, everyone joining us today. Um, I'm gonna give each of the, each of the ladies a, a second or two to just sign off and then Kaylin, I'll give you the last word. So. Go ahead, Jennifer, we'll start with you. Thank you for everyone for joining. Um, I'm happy to collaborate with everyone and to hear all the different ideas in the chat. Thanks for joining us. Um, I just wanna say, make sure you are reaching out if you need anything, you know, colleagues, admin, just friends, you know, make sure you're getting the support that you need as well. Thank you for coming. I just want to emphasize again that you should absolutely reach out to your peers, whether you are a, a third year teacher like me, a first year teacher or someone who has been teaching for 15 years. We can always learn something new. Thank you guys for joining us. And again, just like everyone has said, I'm just going to echo it again. Reach out if you're struggling on anything. Um, but everybody has something to share. so. Please share with everybody whatever you're doing. You never know who it's going to impact and reach. And we all we always want to try something new. I would agree with all of you. Um, I think that the more that we share, uh, the more that we learn, and we're better as uh, as us, you know, as the whole than we are as parts, right? So I think that um, the more that we can work together and um, plan together and share what we're doing, um, the more that the students will benefit. Um, so I thank all of you for, um, for putting up with me daily. <laughs> and uh, I thank you for letting me challenge you. Um, I thank you for taking the risk. I really, they're without risk, there's no reward. So I thank you for that. And I know that you're brave for doing it. Um, it's, it would be very easy to just be handing out digital worksheets all day long. So I thank you for the things that you're doing. I think that you guys can be um, models um, in, you know, for many teachers across the district. So thank you. Um, for those of you watching, if you're interested again in another live stream or something like this, a panel, there are some teachers that are already chomping at the bit and I see my phone going off. So I'm wondering if people want to participate um, but I, we would love it. I think that this is a great learning experience. And I thank you, John, for um, moderating and, and setting everything up. And to all of the minions from EdTech that have been managing the chat window, you guys are heroes. So thank you so much. Um, have a great day. 